Husband casts a voodoo spell on wife turning her into half cow half human after she cheats on him. Mama. A woman sprints to the porch and scoops up three packages. She slipped on wet grass and has injured her ankle. Her accomplice hears her cries. He comes to her aid. He helps her up and carries the injured woman to the car. Once she's safely in the car, he doubles back to finish what she can't. Tell us, Ms. Nagby, the extent of his injuries, where he was shot, and what the what what exactly happened to him that night in terms of his injuries. Ralph was shot on top of his left eye, that I would say in the left frontal lobe, and then he was shot again in the upper right arm. He was shot, he had the bullet in the, in the up here for about, let's say, up to 12 hours before he was taken out. So mm. that injury is extensive and it's the, Residual effect of that injury is going to stay with him for quite a while. He's home, but I want to remind everybody that Ralph is home because he's surrounded by a team of medical professionals. I'm mm. a nurse for almost 20 years. His aunt is a physical therapy. His uncle is a medical professional. That's why he's home. So mm. let's put that into perspective. Yes, yes, that's a very good point. What did the doctors tell you about how he was able to survive this injury? I couldn't believe it when we heard on the news that he was home and walking and talking. So yesterday I talked to his pediatrician and she said, so the CT said that there is just minimal uh, 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 fragments of the bullet in his brain and I said yes and she's mm -hmm. like how and I said I don't know how and she's like bless God and that's yeah, all I could say God. because if she doesn't mm -hmm. understand how I don't understand how because if you get shot at that close of a range and the CT said that and the doctor don't mm -hmm. understand how then I don't understand how yeah, so yeah, none of us that's understand all I how. Say. We're <laughs> just all glad, Ms. Nackby, that he's alive. Lee, I'm going to get to you in just a second, but I want to know from his mother exactly what did your son tell you happened? The kids in this video look like a happy family filming a TikTok. One of the girls is adopted, and what she does to her siblings will make you feel sick. This case has been compared to the movie Orphan. So on the 10th of December, 2021, this father from the Philippines, his name is Cruz, he gets the type of phone call no parent ever wants to receive. At exactly 3 p.m., police inform him that three intruders have entered his house and taken the lives of his two biological children. 18-year-old Gwen, this girl, and 16-year-old Lewis. The pair had been brutally attacked by a baseball bat and hammer. Now, surviving the incident was their 16-year-old daughter named Janice. As you saw from the beginning, Janice was close to her sibling, often seen having fun, dancing, and laughing with them. So it was understandable that she was distraught. When police asked her what happened, she told them that three intruders entered the house. She was lucky enough to escape because she ran to her bedroom, but her other two siblings were just not fast enough. Now, Janice had only been taken in by this family five months earlier. She had formed a close friendship with Gwen and begged her parents to take Janice in. She told her parents that Janice was an orphan who came from a really tough background. And despite the family having limited resources, they agreed. And Janice joined the family. She was welcomed in and all seemed well on the surface. Now, this attack completely devastated the family. As investigators looked into the case, they noticed something very troubling.
stealing. Nothing in the family home had been stolen and the weapons used against the two victims were actually owned by the family. In fact, the baseball bat had been stored in Janice's room, which means the thieves would have had to have entered the room. Police also found a bag of clothes belonging to Janice at the back of the house. Those clothes were covered in blood and she had specifically changed before police arrived. It was becoming clear to police what really happened and Janice was arrested. She ended up confessing. It must be noted that she had the help of two other assailants. As they looked into Janice's past, they realized she wasn't even an orphan. She was sentenced to 30 years in prison. So why did Janice do this? She'd been taken in by a warm, loving family after all. Well, the parents of the two victims believed Janice wanted to be their only child. She had done this out of jealousy. She wanted to be the only one who got their love and affection. My name's Harves and I talk about true crime cases. If you want to hear more content like this, I suggest you follow. A Florida teacher stands accused of having sex with an eighth grade student. He was just 14 years old. Stephanie Peterson's arrest has left parents and students at New Smyrna Beach Middle School near Cape Canaveral, Florida, stunned. The pretty young science teacher who posted these pictures on social media was a student favorite. The shocking story is the talk of the nation. When the boy told his parents about it anyway, they confronted Peterson and demanded she break it off. She allegedly refused, so his parents reported her to police. Details from the police report are shocking. Cops say it all started when Peterson sent the boy multiple nude photographs using Snapchat. She would allegedly pick the student up from his residence late at night and take him back to her house for sex when her husband, a firefighter, was at work. And it seems also before it even got to this point, though, that there was a little bit of grooming that went on here. He would leave his house at 1 o'clock in the morning after everybody went to bed and, and meet the teacher in his driveway, and then they would hang out till the wee small hours in the morning when he would sneak back in his house again. On Monday, Peterson resigned her teaching job, and two days later came her arrest. She was charged with lewd, lascivious battery. Dr. Casey Jordan is a criminologist. Because this has become almost epidemic. About 100 cases of female teacher to male student, inappropriate relationships per year. We blame a lot of the social media and the lapse in boundaries between teachers and students for this uptick. It's terrifying video. A man attempts to break into a home in the middle of the night. He's armed with a sharp metal tool. He tries to jimmy the front door lock. The creep also peers into the window. Still holding that metal blade, he rings the doorbell. <laughs> Homeowner Robert Hemingway watches from his phone as the scary events unfold on his ring cam. He's out of town, but his wife Cindy is inside and home alone. Jim Murray spoke with them. The moment of fear was when he was ringing the doorbell because I didn't know what was going to happen after that. I knew when the doorbell rang that the next move was going to be the glass breaking on the door, so I knew I had to answer the ring. Do you hear the ring? Who is it? Um, this is a little girl. Who? A little girl. The dude slurring his words and appears out of it. Sorry. Don't be sorry. 
It's all right. I engaged with the man. I didn't know what to say, so I said I'm sorry. When cops got there, the suspect had wandered off, but he could still be seen in the neighborhood. Cindy shows officers the surveillance footage, but get this. Police tell Cindy, who's now joined by her neighbors, that they can't arrest him. You have a knife. That was a metal bar, right, exactly. There's certain elements that we need to meet for a crime to take him in, um, and unfortunately, what he did does not meet the elements. Here's where the story takes an even more disturbing turn. Just a few hours after that suspicious man was reported to the police outside the Hemingway's house, he allegedly came here less than a mile away, took off his clothes and broke into an apartment and into the bedroom of 12 year old twins. And here's the man naked in the back of a cop car, finally in custody. It reportedly took three men to restrain him. Come on, folks, what are we waiting for? Rape? Murder? You have cameras, you called the cops. Do you feel betrayed by the system? There's this local reporter, Bruce Willingham. He's in McCurtain County in Oklahoma. And he suspected that county officials were having secret meetings, so he just left his recording device behind. And he ends up catching way more than he expected. With Bruce identifying the sheriff, a local commissioner, and a member of the sheriff's department discussing hiring a hitman to kill both him and his son, Chris, another reporter, and burying them. I've known two or three hitmen that were very quiet guys. Yeah. And would cut no mercy yeah. in Louisiana. It goes around, goes around it. It will. I told you it will. Yeah. I know where two big deep holes are here in I've got an escalator. And these are our free dug. Now, a key thing here, other media outlets covering this story said they could not independently verify who the voices on the audio belonged to. And Chris, who's discussed in the audio, is the one who wrote the piece transcribing the recordings. But for now, we've seen Oklahoma's governor calling for the official's resignations. But I'm also saying he's going to call on the state authorities to open an investigation into any illegal conduct. And Bruce reportedly turning the full recording over to the FBI and the Oklahoma Attorney General's office. But this is insane. Unfortunately, not surprising, but still insane. felt that I got shy and I like felt the blood gushing down my leg. I grabbed on to somebody, I don't know who, and I was yelling for help. Like I was still inside the building, yelling them, yelling at them for help to help me. And nobody would help me. So I had to like gain my strength and like walk outside like after being shy. Disturbing new details are emerging about the elderly man accused of shooting a black teenager who rang his doorbell by mistake. Andrew Lester's ex-wife says he was prone to fits of rage, smashing objects in their home when he was angry. Mary Clayton was married to Lester for 14 years and had three children with him. She says he had a history of violent behavior. And when she called the police, they told her he could do what he liked in his own house. She now lives in California and hasn't spoken to the retired airline mechanic for decades. I was always scared of him. It doesn't surprise me what happened. And Lester's grandson, Clint Ludwig, is adding to the chilling profile. He He's told CNN's Don American Lemon today that Christian the 84-year-old expressed racist views and became obsessed with far-right conspiracy theories, including QAnon. I probably pushed back on some of this stuff, and he couldn't handle being pushed back on. And at a certain point, we kind of lost touch. Lester kept an arsenal of weapons and fitted his home with surveillance cameras, despite living in a low crime neighborhood of Kansas City. The guns were all over. They were, he had them stashed in some spots and had a big locker full of them. And, but yeah, he was uh, ready to defend his home, as he would say. The accused shooter's grandson spoke directly to Ralph Yarl, who is recovering from his head wounds. Proud of you, Ralph. Um, I'm so sorry this happened to you. I am. Um, I understand you're an amazing kid, and I think you're going to grow up to be an amazing man, and my family stands with you. Lester has pled not guilty and is free on $200,000 bail. We just had the third incident in a week of people being shot for accidentally going to the wrong place. This time, it's two high school cheerleaders mistaking their car in a parking lot for another, with one having to be airlifted to the hospital. It happened around 12, 15 a.m. yesterday morning in the parking lot of HEB in Elgin, Texas. Four girls who usually carpool together, making a 360-mile round trip for practice several times a week, went back to the parking lot to get their own cars. It is believed, and captured on surveillance footage, that one of the girls, Heather Roth, opened the door of a car she thought was hers when she saw 25-year-old Pedro Taylor Rodriguez Jr. sitting in the passenger seat. Roth, quickly realizing, retreated back to the original 
original car. Rodriguez then got out and approached the girl's car. Roth then rolled down her window to apologize, but seeing Rodriguez had a gun, they started to drive away with Rodriguez opening fire. The suspect fired five times with an HEB manager witnessing the altercation. While Roth was grazed by a bullet, Peyton Washington was shot in the leg and back. Washington is currently in the ICU with multiple organs being damaged and having her spleen removed. She also has multiple surgeries ahead. This is the third incident in a week. Ralph Yarl was shot by 84-year-old Andrew Lester after ringing the doorbell of the wrong house when he went to pick up his twin brothers. And in the same week, 65-year-old Kevin Monahan shot 20-year-old Kaylin Gillis to death after she turned into the wrong driveway. The suspect in the cheerleader case has been arrested and is facing third-degree felony count of deadly conduct. And a GoFundMe has been set up for Peyton Washington to help cover medical expenses. Here's the cover page and I'll put a link on my IG.